It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's debris from a SpaceX capsule that slammed down into the ground in Australia. Yeah, this has been making a lot of headlines and it is about suspected SpaceX debris that has crashed into farmland in New South Wales. No, no sheep were killed in this process, but it did leave a pretty big dent, a pretty big object, and people are, yeah, freaking out about it. Apparently around 7 a.m. on a Saturday, two farmers discovered what seemed to be space equipment scattered across their sheep paddocks. They called an astrophysicist at the Australian National University for help, Dr. Brad Tucker, and he explained to the farmers that he believed the artifacts came from a SpaceX capsule, which had splashed down on Earth back in May. We believe that piece of space debris is from the SpaceX Crew-1 trunk, which is the unpressurized bottom part of the capsule. This was cataloged and tracked to be re-entered over the southern parts of New South Wales and Australia. So this all checks out. So definitely something to take pictures with. And no, SpaceX has not come forward and claimed this as theirs. In fact, we've seen a lot of examples like this in recent months, and we don't really ever hear SpaceX commenting or saying, yes, this is ours, we've got a handle on it, we've got it under control. Well, this is technically uncontrolled, but it's not as uncontrolled as some other um, rocket pieces like from maybe Long March 5B. Now, luckily, this piece of space junk was a long way away from the farmer's residential property and its livestock but it really just seems like a matter of time to me before something actually really bad happens. Yes, is the likelihood that it is going to crash into a highly populated area very high? No, but there's still a chance. Seemed like every article said it was like this mysterious object, so clearly no mystery. No mystery at all. Um, so, so you see these amazing pictures of this dagger of what looks like shredded composite uh, sticking out out of the, the ground in this uh, sheep farm in Australia. And, you know, it, it was discovered in, in late July, um, exactly on the ground track of the re-entry on July 8th uh, of a dragon trunk, a discarded dragon trunk. And when you look at that, the details of the construction of this this piece and of the two other pieces that have been found and nearby uh you can actually match up particular patterns of of fastener and construction uh to on orbit photos of the dragon truck and go oh yeah this piece sticking out of the ground that's one of the fins of the trunk and this other piece that's part of the trunk skirt and you can, it's, clear, it's very recognizable. Uh, and so there is no doubt in my mind that this is shredded re-entered pieces of dragon trunk. And since a few weeks ago, there was a dragon trunk that re-entered over exactly that spot. Uh, it's not a huge leap to put two and two together. So what happened is in November, 2020, the crew one mission with great fanfare was launched to the space station. Um, the dragon docked to the space station. In May of 2021, it undocked, and minutes before they made the deorbit burn, they jettisoned the trunk section. And so the Dragon capsule comes back to Earth, the trunk section stays in orbit. And, uh, and it stayed in orbit for about a year, a little over a year, orbiting the Earth 7,000 times and uh, until its orbit shrunk and shrunk and shrunk and got low enough to re-enter. And that happened to be on an orbit that took it over Australia. Uh, and so we had known on July 8th that this object had re-entered over Australia. There were at the time, lots of people on the ground who had, ooh, meteors, space debris uh, in the sky, right? You people saw this thing burn up in a nicely spectacular fashion. And at the time we said, okay, we know what that object is. That's the dragon trunk you're seeing. And so to find 
along that exact track. I mean, within a couple of miles of the of, of the track of the uh, 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 of the spacecraft, uh, big pieces of the dragon trunk. It's a little surprising. We hadn't expected that much to survive reentry, but uh, but it's not a big leap to go. Okay, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, but I mean, had it been on one of those sheep farmers, right? I mean. That was kind of my thought is like, I'm glad it didn't oh, hit. Yeah, you don't want one of those sticking. Well, even in, in, in your house, right? It would be bad, right? That's just sticking out of the roof or something. Um, so, so luckily, most of the earth, and in particular, most of Australia, is is empty, right? Uh, well, you may not consider it empty if you're a sheep, but, but uh, um, you know, so, so essentially no harm done. Uh, but um, but yeah, it's it's playing, it's literally playing darts, right? <laughs> and, uh, I was gonna say we've talked about this in the past. Like, is this a problem, or is it only gonna be a problem when when it is a problem? Well, that's right, and and so I think there's an increasing awareness. So that there's an increasing awareness that uh, uh, maybe we've we've been playing the odds a little too long. <laughs> Right. Eventually, you're gonna, uh, your luck is gonna run out, and an awareness that larger, a larger fraction of a re-entering object survives than we had used to think, and relatively small re-entering objects are uh, survive more than don't burn up entirely right mm -hmm. and and that that's sort of you know we used to think okay if it was small it would burn up entirely um well maybe not so much uh and so so i think that the combination of that uh of being surprised by how much actually does survive entry and the fact that yeah you know you can only play the odds for so long uh, makes us a little more conservative in the years to come, I think, about what stuff we allow to make uncontrolled re-entries like this. And so, you know, with contrast, for example, the Starliner, the Boeing rival to the Crew Dragon, which for completely different reasons has, it doesn't really have a trunk section, it has a service module section, and that makes the deorbit burn. And so the service module burns up in the atmosphere at the point of, point of deorbit. In a controlled way, whereas with Dragon, the engines are on the Dragon capsule and not on the trunk, and so they get rid of the trunk beforehand. Um, but that leaves this piece of space debris, and it, it's not clear how massive the trunk is. Uh, I've seen estimates ranging from a few hundred kilograms to several tons. Wow! And SpaceX, as usual, are just you know they won't say. Yeah. Right. And and so that makes it difficult to assess the safety. Um, so, uh, um, but I think I think that we may have to to reassess in in future design. I think we're stuck with the dragon as it is. But you know, the a next generation of designs, obviously Starship. Right, the idea is not to leave anything in orbit with Starship. It's going to come down 100 percent and be fully reusable. Um, but other launch vehicles, other spaceships uh maybe need to think a bit more about yeah probably it's not good to leave junk in orbit well didn't uh long march 5b also just get a bunch of criticism for their recent yeah, that, the, so the long march 5b is a whole other level of that uh i'm saying okay maybe at worst the spacex trunk is two tons the long march 5b stage is 21 tons uh it's a huge vehicle it's 30 meters long uh, and for we we knew for certain sure that several tons of material was going to survive reentry, uncontrolled reentry. Yeah, they just leave it in orbit. It orbits the Earth for several days until the atmosphere brings it down in some random location, uh, which this time around happened to be the island of Borneo. Right, but like that's crazy. It could land. Yeah, how how is that even allowed? 
Well, you know, in the 70s, we did the same thing, right? Uh, famously, Skylab re-entering over Australia. Uh, but then we realized, yeah, it's probably not a good idea. And we, we designed our rockets not to do this, not to leave big rocket stages uh, remaining in orbit. So, you know, the Falcon 9 upper stage sometimes is left in orbit to do an uncontrolled re-entry. But again, that's four tons, not 21 tons. Mm -hmm. uh, the Space Shuttle, the SLS, the Ariane 5, all have their big core stages suborbital so that they land in a particular predictable location. Right. Uh, and China's the only uh, country that launches these big, you know, 15 to 20 ton class uh, core stages and leaves them in orbit. So that is, uh, you know, not best practice, I would say. And uh, the Chinese just go, yeah, okay, well, but it still probably won't hurt anyone. So I want to know, is this something that you've thought about much? I mean, we're seeing all the headlines. We're seeing more coverage of this type of thing, you know, space junk falling out of the sky. Is this something that you're worried about and maybe we should have more regulation or should we just keep having these mysterious objects show up in random places like in the middle of a sheep farm? I want to know from you in the comments. Please make sure to subscribe to Ellie in Space if you haven't already so that you can get your SpaceX updates and some Tesla news we will be going to the shareholder meeting. So you will not want to miss that. Not a lot of people got an invite. I was really lucky to be selected in this lottery drawing, so I won't let you down. And I'm really excited to see how it goes. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.